All right, hey everyone, it's your resident Creality fanboy, Nathan Builds Robots here. And today I wanted to make a video about the five things I hate about the K2 Plus. That's right, you know, I say a lot of good things about this printer, but there's some things that you should know before you decide to pick one up. So the first thing that I hate about it is how heavy it is. This thing is 70 or 80 pounds. Get a good idea, you know, what this is like. You can pick it up. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it is pretty heavy. So if you need a printer that's gonna be at all portable, it might not be a good option for you. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move on to the second thing that I hate about the Creality K2 Plus, and that's the CFS system and the amount of noise that it makes. Now, if you're running this without the multicolor unit on the top, and you're just feeding it through a spool on the side of the machine like this, all the motors and the fans are really well enclosed and they don't make a whole lot of noise. But this actual CFS unit does make a bit of gear noise. So it makes a little bit of noise when it's loading and unloading filament. And also when you're doing a print and it's just continuously feeding one color, it has to use those motors to feed the filament bit by bit as it's printing. So this thing will make a little farting noise about every five to 10 seconds. It can get annoying, and I think if I was running a lot of big prints and I had to stay in the room with me, I would stick to single color and feed that through the side. Now, overall, it's not the worst thing in the world. There's printers that are much louder than this, but it is one thing that's a little bit annoying about the machine. Okay, the third thing that I hate about the K2 Plus is there's a little bit of Z banding. Uh, now, if you know what Z banding is, that's basically when you print a taller object, you can see slight repeating patterns in the printed piece. Here's a part, and I'm not sure if you can see them. I will hold it up to the camera here. And you can see about every four millimeters, there's a little bump, like bump, 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 bump. And it's nothing too bad, and on large prints, I don't really notice it. But that's one thing that you might dislike. Um, in terms of print quality, that's the only detectable issue that I've had with this thing. Uh, the first layer quality is always super excellent. I've had no issues with bed adhesion. And as long as I clean the bed off, even on really large prints that are wanting to curl a little bit, they stay put and I've been having really good luck making massive parts with it. Let's move on to the fourth thing that I hate about this printer and that is the poop system. Now it's, uh, you know, it's just this little system in the back where it deposits the filament, then it hits this little flapper mechanism and it's supposed to like knock things loose. It just like comes up and hits the, uh, the poop and tries to juggle it a little bit to break things loose. And it works pretty well, but um, I've noticed a couple pieces building up in there and it could be an issue, like maybe statistically it could happen every once in a while but it hasn't directly caused any failed prints for me. I've just noticed that like every once in a while there'll be two or three pieces of poop built up in there before it knocks it down and it falls. But that did cause an issue when I was partially obstructing the, uh, the poop chute here. So I had this kind of blocking the way, this little zip tie that I installed because I was thinking about adding something back here. But um, the poops would fall past this and I didn't think I had an issue. But when we had two or three poops built up, they were big enough to actually get caught on this little zip tie, and that caused a massive clog. Now apparently the latest version of firmware can detect if there's like some poop being built up back there, so that's good. But I still think that poop flap mechanism might need a couple more iterations. In all the multicolor prints that I did, I had thousands of color changes without any failures. I just had that one failure at the end because the poop chute got backed up from getting caught on that zip tie. But, you know, I'm gonna take full responsibility for that one. I think it was my fault. Um, if you disagree, then let me know in the comments down below. And the last thing I hate about the Creality K2 Plus is the amount of poop that it makes. Uh, when you're doing really large prints, since you have a massive print volume here, you can fill it up with a really big print and make it four colors or whatever. But in that case, you're gonna end up with probably close to a quarter of a kilogram of poop material. Now, why does this thing poop so much? Well, there's another of contributing factors. One is the hot end has a longer melt zone. So in order to purge that melt zone out, it has to poop a little bit more than an equivalent Bamboo Lab printer. 
because you know, you've got more melt zone, so you have to push more filament through to get it all cleared out. Now that extra melt zone means that you're gonna get increased print speeds, but it's a trade-off. You know, you're having a little bit more waste when you're doing multicolor filament changes. At the end of the day, on a machine that's this big, I think I would definitely value the higher flow rates more than the decreased waste. And you just have to think about your use case. Are you going to be doing tons of color changes? Well, basically on every AMS style system, you're gonna have a lot of waste when you do that. So really what this thing is good for is just automatic filament selection. If you're printing out multiple parts, like on this little demonstration piece here, I was just selecting the color before I started a print or things like these Hue Forge prints where they're relatively small and flat and there's a limited number of color changes. Um, it really doesn't produce that much waste relative to how big these pieces are. Or if you're going to do batch printing where you're printing a massive number of duplicate pieces in a large tray of parts, then your per part poop and purge waste is going to be less. Basically, if you printed one of these little guys out, it produces the same amount of waste as if you print 60 of them out on a single tray. So you just have to be a little bit smart and work within the constraints of the machine to be able to do multicolor printing without producing an enormous amount of waste. However, I do think the CFS system is a good addition to the machine. It allows for much more convenient operation of the machine and I just like it overall. And despite those five things that I dislike about the Creality K2 Plus, I'm still gonna be using this as my primary printer because there's so many things that are good about it that definitely outweigh those cons to the point where I'm perfectly fine using this as my primary printer. I just need something that can print large parts, do it relatively quietly, do it very reliably, and this machine is delivering on those fronts. So there are a few things that the modding community or Creality could work on to improve this further, but in terms of an overall package and what you can get out of this machine, I would still highly recommend it. It's still one of my favorite printers and I still think it's the best printer that I have. Okay, thanks for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots. If you want to pick one of these up, I've got an affiliate link in the description down below. I've also done a number of other videos showing some thermal analysis of, you know, all the parts in here and the evenness of the heated chamber and how everything works behind the back of the machine where all the electronics are. And uh, basically my longer term impressions and a bunch of sample prints. So if you want to learn more about this machine, go ahead and click those links and check everything out. But if you're a Bamboo Lab fanboy and you still don't think this machine is any good simply because of the brand name on it, then go ahead and dislike the video and uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about this printer. All right, thanks for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots, and I'll see you in the next episode.